Open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Psalm 61 Hear my crying, O God, give ear unto my prayer. From the ends of the earth will I call upon thee, when my heart is in heaviness. O set me up upon the rock that is higher than I, for thou hast been my hope and a strong tower for me against the enemy. I will dwell in thy tabernacle for ever, and my trust shall be under the covering of thy wings. For thou, O Lord, hast heard my desires, and hast given an heritage unto those that fear thy name. Thou shalt grant the king a long life, that his years may endure throughout all generations. He shall dwell before God for ever. O prepare thy loving mercy and faithfulness, so will I always sing praise unto thy name, that I may daily perform my vows. The first lesson is from the fifth chapter of the book of Deuteronomy, starting at the first verse. Moses convened all Israel and said to them, Hear, O Israel, the statutes and ordinances that I am addressing to you today. You shall learn them and observe them diligently. The Lord our God made a covenant with us at Horeb. Not with our ancestors did the Lord make this covenant. But with us, who are all of us here, alive today, the Lord spoke with you face to face at the mountain out of the fire. At that time, I was standing between the Lord and you to declare to you the words of the Lord, for you were afraid because of the fire and did not go up the mountain. And he said, I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt. Out of the house of slavery, you shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol, whether in the form of anything that is in heaven above, or that is on the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or worship them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing children for the iniquity of parents to the third and fourth generation of those who reject me but showing steadfast love to the thousandth generation of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not acquit anyone who misuses his name. Observe the Sabbath day and keep it holy, as the Lord your God commanded you. Six days you shall labour and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. You shall not do any work, you, or your son or daughter, or your male or female slave, or your ox or your donkey, or any of your livestock, or the resident alien in your towns, so that your male and female slave may rest as well as you. Remember that you were a slave in the land of Egypt, and the Lord your God brought you out from there with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm. Therefore the Lord your God commanded you to keep the Sabbath day. Honour your father and your mother as the Lord your God commanded you so that your days may be long and that it may go well with you in the land that the Lord your God has given you. You shall not murder 
neither shall you commit adultery, neither shall you steal, neither shall you bear false witness against your neighbour, neither shall you covet your neighbour's wife, neither shall you desire your neighbour's house or field, or male or female slave, or ox or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbour. These words the Lord spoke with a loud voice to your whole assembly at the mountain, out of the fire, the cloud, and the thick darkness, and he added no more. He wrote them on two stone tablets and gave them to me. Here endeth the first lesson. My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Saviour, for he hath regarded the lowliness of his handmaiden. For behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. For he that is mighty hath magnified me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on men that fear him throughout all generations. He hath shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the indignation of their hearts. He hath put down the mighty from their seat and hath exalted the humble and meek. He hath filled the hungry with good things and the rich he hath sent empty away. He remembering his mercy hath hope in his servant Israel as he promised to our forefathers, Abraham and his seed forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The second lesson is taken from the 20th chapter of the Gospel of St John, starting at the first verse. Excuse me, the second lesson is taken from the letter to the Ephesians, chapter 1, starting at verse 1. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God to the saints who are in Ephesus and are faithful in Christ Jesus. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love. He destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of his will to the praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed on us in the Beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of his grace that he lavished on us. With all wisdom and insight he has made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure that he set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time, to gather up all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. In Christ we have also obtained an inheritance, having been destined according to the purpose of him who accomplishes all things according to his counsel and will, so that we, who were the first to set our hope on Christ, might live for the praise of his glory. In him you also, when you had heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and had believed in him, were marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance towards redemption as God's own people, to the praise of his glory. Here endeth the second lesson. Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, to be a light to lighten the Gentiles, and to be the glory of thy people Israel. 
Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our God, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with thy spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us and grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the Queen and mercifully heal us when we call upon thee. Endue thy ministers with righteousness, and make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people, and bless thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, because there is none other that fighteth for us, but only thou, O God. O God, make clean our hearts within us, and take not thy Holy Spirit from us. Let us pray. Almighty God, who hast given thine only Son to us, unto us both a sacrifice for sin, and also an example of godly life, give us grace, that we may always most thankfully receive that his inestimable benefit, and also daily endeavour ourselves to follow the blessed steps of his most holy life, through the same Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, who art the author of peace and lover of concord, in knowledge of whom standeth our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom, defend us, thy humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in thy defence, may not fear the power of any adversaries, through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lighten our darkness, we beseech thee, O Lord, and by thy great mercy, defend us from all perils and dangers of this night, for the love of thy only Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us come before the throne of grace in confidence that our God will be listening to us. Heavenly Father, we ask that you would please bless our church. Bless all church leaders, our bishops, Graham, Alan and Jonathan and help them to lead us well in this unprecedented time when we cannot meet together. Thank you for the ways the church has tried to connect with people since lockdown. And thank you for every single person who has accessed the church online. May we be relevant and real and accessible and able to demonstrate your love in a way that may be felt. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Thank you for our benefice of Colgate and Tombland, 
and for our wonderful priest Alaric and for everyone who contributes to the life of our churches. Please show us our gifts so we may use them in the service of you and each other. As physical boundaries are less significant at the moment, show us how we can support and encourage each other and so we may build up the community. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In our diocesan prayer calendar, we pray for the Glavin Valley, consisting of Blakeney, Clay next to the sea, Blanford, Leathering Set with Bayfield and Wifton, and their clergy, Richard Laurie, and readers, Penelope Thewlis and Roger Bland. Also, Blakeney CLV VA Primary School. In the Worldwide Anglican Communion, we pray for three Mount Kenya dioceses in Kenya, the Central Diocese and their Bishop Timothy Hicheri, the Southern Diocese and their Bishop Timothy Raji, and the West and their Bishop Joseph Kagunga. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray your blessing on the Queen and our government. Please do guide them as they make decisions about how best to handle the virus. May they be wise. Thank you for all those people still going to work for us so that we may have what we need. Please protect them and keep them and their households safe. And help us all to ensure that our sense of appreciation for everyone in society continues so we may have a more balanced, equal world. Thank you for all we ordinary people that are helping each other and helping the vulnerable, being good neighbours, and for all the charities and volunteers that are seeking to assist where they can. Thank you for the great capacity that we have to adapt and to care and to act. Help us not to be overwhelmed by the magnitude of this problem, but to trust that love will prevail in all things, even this. Please guide scientists and researchers around the world as they seek to understand the virus and learn how to rein it in. May knowledge and experience around the world be shared. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for healing for all who are suffering or sick in any way, and for all who are fearful or lonely or struggling. Please keep us all close to you and give us the assurance of how valuable we are to you and how very precious. We bring before you all who have asked for our prayers and those on our list. Nikki and her daughter, Chris, Elizabeth and family, George, Monica and her mother, Julie and family, Tim, Rosemary and family, Clarence and his sister, Sally, James, Trish, Deirdre, Father Alan, Canon Richard, Paul, Leah and family, Megan, Derek, Derek, Mel, Barry, Fiona, Robert, Susan, Stephen, Nairi, Gemma, Carol and Rayan and family. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who have died and for the bereaved who are also coping with this terrible separation. Please comfort and reassure that through the sacrifice of your Son, Jesus Christ, love prevails. We bring before you those who have recently died. Samia, Catherine, Geoffrey, Brandina, Ian, Father David, Janet, Ria Luca, Diane and Douglas. And we pray also for those whose anniversaries occur at this time. 
from Mary Cossey and Samuel Land. May they rest in peace and rise in glory. Finally, Father, we pray for ourselves. Thank you for the day and for the glimpses of the divine that we have experienced today. Help us to see you in unexpected places because you have said that you will never leave us. And while we may not always feel your presence, help us to believe it. Give us faith to believe your promises. Thank you that you love all your children, every single one of them, every single one of us gathered here this evening. You are our God and we love you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications unto thee, and dost promise that when two or three are gathered together in thy name, thou wilt grant their requests. Fulfil now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants, as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come, life everlasting. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all, evermore. Amen.